and it's going to go right along with Sunday school. The question I want to ask you today is this. Does your faith please God? Does your faith please God? You got your Bibles, go read the book of Hebrews. There's a man in the Bible that his faith pleased God. Where's your faith at today? Top cheap, but where's your faith at? You're going to need faith. I'm telling you, the closer we get to the coming of the Lord, the more faith you're going to need. Stronger you're going to have to be to stand. Hebrews chapter 11. Stand and let's read God's word together. <clears throat> I'm going to just read one verse, but I'm going to cover several. Hebrews chapter 11, I'm going to read verse number 5. It says, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And was not found because God had translated him. Before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Think about that. That he pleased God. Now think about yourself. Are you doing everything that you can to please God? I don't know about you, but I still got a lot of work to do. I'm trying, but I still got a lot of work to do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we come to you today. We thank you. We praise you for your blessing. Father, we pray, God, not by might or by power, but God, it's by thy spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Father, we ask you to anoint our lips of clay. God, that heaven would come down. The glory would fill us so God. This is the day that the Lord has made. We should be glad and rejoice in it. God asks you to anoint our lips. God, anoint this airway. Holy Ghost, walk up and down the avenues of this house today. And Father, we give you praise. And we give you honor and glory, God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to go back to verse number one. This passage of scripture, but I want to build up to where I read verse 5. But they've got to build up to get there. But 2 Chronicles, excuse me, 2 Corinthians 5 says this For we walk by faith and not by sight. Because a lot of times we get the attitude if I can't see it with my eyes, I can't believe it. If I can't hear it with my ears, I I still don't believe it. But he says in his word to walk by faith and not by sight. But preacher, you're telling me i got to believe in something that I ain't seen. That's exactly what I'm telling you. That's where your faith comes in. Because listen to me. <laughs> to walk in faith, we got to learn to live by faith. Let's look at the Bible. There's some instances in the Bible about faith. There's different types of faith in the Bible. Number one, you've got to have faith to be saved. What is that? That's faith in knowing who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Understanding what the Word says, that He can come into your heart and He can save you. You also got another faith mentioned in the Bible. It's called general faith. That's the faith that God gives you when you get saved. And what you do with it's up to you. You can increase that faith. Because the increasing it means that the more you read this and the more you understand the word of God, the stronger your faith can be. That no matter what you faith in the day, if you trust God, God will get you through if you have faith in Him. Another type of faith that's mentioned in the Bible is the fruit of faith. It's the fruit that comes out of your spirit from the inside of you. And the last faith that talks about in the Bible is the gift of faith. What is that, preacher? That's believing that you, whatever you ask God and truly believe it. Don't wish you wish you don't pray about it today and change your mind tomorrow. That's having faith that when you pray to God and you stand on it and you realize that God will move on your behalf. Because a lot of times we pray, hallelujah, we're, we're wishy-washy. We 
prayed and we wavered. We prayed. We said, God, please help me. And today we got great faith, but tomorrow when the enemy comes, we don't have great faith. Church, we're living in a time of life which I believe that this is just my belief that we're living in the greatest time known to man. Why do you say that? Because I believe we're going to have to have the faith to see the coming of the Lord. I believe we're going to have to have the faith and glory to God that no matter what the enemy throws at us, we can have faith to say, God, I'm standing on your word. God, I've got faith to believe you said I believe it. And no matter what happens, I believe it that you can answer what your prayers are, God. we got to have that kind of faith. I looked up the word there. First verse says, Now faith is. The word now means this present time. Now I don't mean yesterday. Now, now means now. Now faith is. When it tells me this, I've got to have now faith. I don't need yesterday's faith. Yesterday's faith is gone. I need mean, now faith is the substance. I need God to move in my life today. I need to have the faith that God, I'm holding on to your unchanging hand. Right, let's go back to what we said earlier. God, I can't see it with my eyes. I can't hear it in my ear. But God, I'm standing with faith that you said it. I believe it and I'm holding on to it. I'm holding on to it. We wonder why we don't have power in the church anymore. We ain't got faith in the church anymore. We don't have the faith that we need to be strong. We got to have faith to pray. Not only for us, but for one another. We got to have faith to move the mountain. We got to have faith in glory. God, no matter what comes up, we got to have faith to know God. I see what the enemy thrown up, but God, I've got faith to know that you can move that mountain. I've got faith to know, God, that you can, I can trust in you today. It doesn't, no matter what it is, God, that you can't get me through. Yes. But let me tell you this. Sometimes God, God will give you the faith not to move the mountain, but to go through that mountain. Oh, preacher, I don't want to hear that. Well, that's tough. Sometimes you've got to learn to go through something. You've got to have the faith to go through it. Because a lot of people say, well, I, I don't know if I can go through that. Yes, you can. Well, listen, who's your faith at? Who do you believe in? I don't just speak it out of the mouth and your heart ain't where it needs to be. Get your heart where it needs to be. Then you can speak it out your mouth and you can stand on it. Come on, man. The word faith in the Hebrew, excuse me, in the Greek. I hope I pronounced this right. Patis. P-I-S-T-I-S is a Greek. And I'm very bad with Greek and Hebrew, but I try my best. I can stay in practice for 30 minutes and still miss it. But the word means in the Greek to have the assurance, the confidence. And listen, I like this. Trust in what you believe in. Trust in what you believe in. So what's your, what's your trust in? What is your belief in? Who are you believing in? Are you believing what the world says or are you believing what the Word of God says? I'll take the Word of God every day. Amen. I'll take what His Word says. Because His Word contradicts sometimes what the world has to say. But that's all right. I've read the back of the book. I know what, what's going to happen. How I mean, man, we may, may not win down here, but I know I'm going to win up there. I know I'm going to have the faith to get through there. Whatever the world throws up, I know that I've got faith to believe. Hallelujah. I'm not bringing politics into this. But God sets up, God takes down. God sets up, God takes down. But I know His Word don't change. Whoever's in there, God will make the way. God will come through every time. Hallelujah. Faith coming by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. Yes. 
Hallelujah. You gotta have faith in God, not man. Amen. You gotta have faith in God. Let me say that again, not man. Because I promise you, man will let you down. Yeah. Yeah. I'll even stay high, even go one step further. I'll let you down. Don't put your faith in me, put your faith in God. Right. Put your trust in God. Put what you believe in God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Because what does it say now? Faith is a substance. The word substance in the Greek means support, reality. Because what's what? Let me just stop for a minute. Some people don't like to live in reality. Some people want to live in a fairyland. Reality is real. We face reality every day. We have to have faith in God every day to make it from day to day. Because if you don't have faith, you'll live in a fairy tale. Yep. But you have faith in God, you have reality that God will get you through. Because it says faith, now faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence is not seen. I wrote this down. Faith is not based upon your five senses. It's not based on that. But rather faith is based on the word of God. Because a lot of times you want your you want your eyes to lead you, you want your hearing to lead you, you want your taste to lead you. But when well, listen. It's not the Word of God leading you. Then you need to go back and examine and see where you missed it. Because it takes faith in God to stand. But verse 2 says, For by it the elders obtain a good report. Explain that to me, preacher. Why did you ask? You know what it's saying right here? That what the elders done was approved by God. So let me ask you something this morning. What you do is it approved by God? Because if it ain't approved by God, it ain't gonna work. But see, preacher, I'm so used to living in the world and, and, and depending upon the world. How do you And then you tell me that I need to, to believe in a God that I've not seen. Yeah, I got a faith. I ain't seen him, but I know he lives inside of me. Hallelujah. And I know he speaks to me. Hallelujah, Lord. And I know I've heard his voice before. Hallelujah. But I know most of all that this word is real. This word is true. That every word was written by inspired men of God, led by the Spirit of God in their lives. Amen. So what about you? Are you approving? Because listen, look at verse 3. <laughs> Those through faith, we understand that the world was framed by the Word of God. So that things which, which are seen are not, are, were not made of things which do appear. Listen. God made everything happen. God made things happen. God spoke into existence this world. He done that. He made light. He made dark. He made it all. Do you have faith to believe him? Do you have faith to believe what this word says? Do you have faith to stand? Because faith, the world was framed. Let me share something with you. You wouldn't be where you're at today if it wasn't 
by the faith of God. Amen. Some of us just went through all kinds of things in our life, but we had the faith in God to bring us through. We had the faith in God to realize that no matter what I face today, God's helping me to get through today. How many times in your life have you went through a situation and you're thinking, oh my God, how am I going to get through it? And all of a sudden you come through it and you're thinking, man, I like God moved for me. That's having faith in God. Yes. That's having faith to believe that God can do all things. That's have faith to believe that no matter what you're facing, God is able to move on your behalf. Because I'm telling you something, church. Go back to Sunday school this morning and everything, talking about the ten virgins. You're going to have to have faith, unconditional faith, to make it the closer we get to the coming of the Lord. You're going to have to have faith in determining God or the world. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. God said in his word that I supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Okay? Am I going to believe that? Or am I going to believe the world is going to help me? Listen to me this morning. You better listen. God can tell you and promise you that he can supply all your needs. Does the world tell you that? The Bible says to choose you this day whom you'll serve. Don't take that too lightly. But it's going to come to that point before the coming of the Lord. You're going to choose you this day whom you're going to serve. But as for me and my house... We're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Is it going to be easy? No. But one of the greatest apostles in the Bible, Apostle Paul, <coughs> in a time of his life, the Satan was buckling over and over. And he went to the Lord and asking God, would you remove this for me? God, would you remove this for me? God, would you remove this for me? And all of them, the Lord asked him and he said, my grace is sufficient in the time of need. My grace is sufficient in the time of need. My grace is sufficient. If it's good enough for Apostle Paul, it's good enough for us today. My grace is sufficient. we got to have faith to believe that we have faith today. My grace is sufficient in the time of need. Because look at verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent <coughs> sacrifice than Cain. But which he attained witnesses that he was righteous, God testifies of his gift. I want to go stop just a minute. I want to talk about Cain and Abel. I can look at you can look at it in many ways, but you can look at it like this. Abel. He offers a sin sacrifice. He acknowledged in his own sin. And he needed mercy from God. Cain. Cain, on the other hand, he offered a fruit offering. He ignored his personal need of God. To him, it was just a formality. Church, there's people in the world today that think serving God is a formality. I come to church on Sunday because it's a formality. I come to church on Wednesday because it's a formality. You're missing the boat. When you come to God's house, you're coming to worship Him. You're coming to praise Him. Hallelujah, glory to God. You're coming. Hallelujah, glory to God. To pay homage to an almighty God that cares about you enough that He sent His only begotten Son to take your place. But you've got to have faith. Look 
with Abel. He understood what he had to do. Now listen. That's the Christian. A true Christian today understands what he has to do. Cain on the other hand. is like a lot of the church world today. It's a formality. I come in here. I sing two songs. Pick up the offering. Get up and speak a few things. Then we go home. It's a formality. That goes back to choose you this day. Are you really going to choose God and live God the way God wants you to do it? Are you going to have faith in God that no matter what you're facing, I've got the faith that I can hold on? Amen. The Bible says that if we have faith of a grain of mustard seed, that we can speak to the mountain and it be removed. How much faith do we have today? Because listen to me. In the facts and the struggles and the battles that we face day by day, sometimes our faith gets weak. That's why we need one another to pray for each other. That's why we need to have people to pray, God, please intervene, please move. Our brother, sister, so and so, they need you to move. That's why I tell you all the time, I need you, you need me. We need each other. Because when one person's faith is weak, that's when we as Christians can come together and pray and help God to lift them back up. Yes, amen. But we gotta have that faith. Gotta have faith. We gotta believe. We've got to stand. Because look at verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. It was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. <clears throat> Why? How did he please God? Listen. He pleased God because his faith was ex uh, what's the right word? His faith was 100% trusting in God. How much faith are you trusting in God for everything? How much faith do we have? How much faith that we have. Because <clears throat> listen to me, you can't have faith today that can move a mountain and tomorrow. I don't even know if I even believe God. Either you do or you don't. There is no in between. There is not when I I can have faith today, but tomorrow. I want to have faith in the world. The Bible said either you're hot or you're cold. I spew you out of his mouth Amen. for those that want to be wishy-washy. Church, we're living in a time right now that if we have faith in anything but God, anything but God, going to have a hard time with me. Because the world can't supply everything you need like God can. He can't. Even though they talk a pretty picture, they can't give you peace like God can. They can't give you joy like God can. They can't give you happiness like God can. They can't reach down inside of you and make the way for you. But God can. So the question I have this morning is, church, and I'm speaking for everybody in the sound of my voice, from me back to you. We gotta have faith like we've never had 
before. Because the enemy would love to come in and kill and destroy, steal and destroy this church. He wants to destroy anybody that's going to stand for him, Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I've come too far to quit. I've come too far to turn back. Yes, amen. I've got more days behind me than I have in front of me. Those songs, I can almost see the lights of that city. Yes. Amen. And I'm telling you, I got the faith now that I, I don't want to miss it. Church, we got to have the faith that God, this obstacle is in front of me. Either help me to get through it, get around it, or you move it, God. Amen. Amen. That's the kind of faith we got to have. That's what we got to have. Because listen to me. If the pastor can have faith and you can have faith, then we can come together as one. Amen. For a long time in my life, I always thought, God, I used to pray, God, I need more faith. Nothing happened. Oh, I'd go up to be praying, I need more faith. Nothing would happen. Then I heard an old preacher one time say this. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It ain't about how much you pray, but it's how much you get this in here. Because what is faith? It's what you believe in. The more faith, the more of this you get inside of here, the stronger you can become as a Christian. The more faith that you get of this inside of you, hallelujah, when the enemy comes, you'll know what to do because you've got faith that God showed you what to do. Yes, amen. So let me ask you this morning. How much faith do you have and is it pleasing God? Any kind of testimony that he pleased God. And he pleased God because his faith was totally dependent upon God. Totally dependent upon God. You got family, you got lost loved ones in your family. Do you have faith to believe that God can move the mountain to save them? Yes. yes. Do you have faith to believe that when somebody comes up to you, then they said, I need prayer. You got enough faith to believe that I can, you can pray right then, or are you going to have to pray, God, hold on just a minute, I got to get right with God? We ought to have the faith to be ready when somebody says, I need you to pray. Drop what you're doing right now and say, God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, will you touch my brother? Will you touch my sister? Will you reach your hand down? God, you see what they're facing. You see what they need, God. Will you move in a mighty way? Touch their body. Rebuke that infirmity. God, touch them and heal them and deliver them and make them ever with hope, God. That's how faith. Listen to me, this sister that brought out something good in Sunday school this morning. If you're ashamed of him, he said, I'll be ashamed of you before you Father, don't be ashamed of it wherever you're at. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him and he'll direct that path. Church, don't lose having faith in God. Don't lose it. Trust in Him. Believe in Him. This church we're going to need the faith to make it in these last days. Will you stand with me? Well,
come up here and help me pray over this prayer call. We're going to pray for those watching. We're going to pray over this prayer call for now. For Sister Geneva, would you stretch your hands this way and let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father God, as we come to you right now, God, I pray, God, that you would move in a mighty, mighty way, God, on this prayer call. God, I pray, God, I bind the powers of darkness, principalities, God, and I rebuke you in your infirmity right now. Oh, God, and not my might, not my power, but God, it's by thy spirit. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, God. Lord, I pray for those watching across the airway, God. Lord, if the anointing will go out, God, let this message be ordained by you today, God. Hold on, oh, shut that out, man. God, it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. All right.